Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So most of us were casually threatened with materialistic retribution in childhood. If you weren't good, as I was told, I'm sure you were too, Father Christmas would take away your presents and replace them with lumps of coal. Now being the toy obsessed creature that I was, this was enough to keep me on the straight and narrow all year round. But I think it would have been slightly more traumatising had I been warned that were I naughty, a spirit would come along, split my stomach open, remove my guts and replace them with straw and pebbles. Hello and welcome to my library. If you're new here, hi, my name is Chinsia. And if you're not new here and you're one of my lovely regulars, hi, how are you? I hope you're doing splendidly. So today's video looks at the dark and disturbing folklore of Krampus and his spirit counterpart, Perkton, the beast-like creatures that originate from German folklore who punish children during the Yule season. Krampus, the half-man, half-goat, who essentially served as Saint Nicholas's evil counterpart, was a demonic beast said to capture naughty children during the night and carry them in his sack or barrel to his lair, where he either drowned, ate, or transported them to hell. Krampus's name derives from the German word Krampen, meaning claw, and tradition notes that it is largely believed that he is the son of hell in Norse mythology. The legendary beast also shares many characteristics as other creatures that we see in Greek mythology, including satyrs and fauns. Perkton, who I've mentioned, is his fellow beastly friend, and she is a female spirit that roams the countryside in the middle of winter. She enters the homes of children between Christmas and Epiphany and rewards good children with a silver coin, but punishes bad ones by splitting open their stomachs, as I detailed earlier. Now, Krampus isn't the only Christmas bad boy in European folklore. Bellas Nickel and Necht Ruprecht. I can't. I can't speak German. I'm so sorry. Necht Ruprecht. No, they don't roll their arse. I keep rolling my arse. Anyway, these people. They played similar roles. They doled out punishments to naughty children, which also included drowning, whipping, or dragging them into the woods. But Krampus slowly usurped these lesser known characters and dominated the holiday, and has now become somewhat famous today across the world. It's believed that Krampus and these other figures originate from pagan celebrations of the winter solstice and later became part of Christian traditions in which Saint Nicholas visited children to reward them on December the 5th and 6th. Around that time, you see, the demonic Krampus was said to also visit children and punish them. In Alpine Austria and some parts of Germany, this day is known as Krampusnacht or Krampus Night when adults might sometimes dress up as Krampus to frighten children in their homes, which to me is just utterly hilarious. And I'm sure if my mother had known about this, she would have done it and taken it too far. Anyway, Krampus is still celebrated in Germany and beyond today, with events taking place in Austria, Bavaria, Hungary, Slovenia and the Czech Republic and Croatia. However, funny enough, in 2008, the folklore traditions acknowledging Krampus and Perkton were banned from one of the Christmas markets in Bavaria. I don't know why. So, on the 5th of December, one of Austria's traditions, and many other countries' traditions, during the Advent season are processions to celebrate Saint Nicholas in the winter. And at the same time, there are groups of people who dress up as the devils in fur, beastly, with scary carved wooden masks, chains and wooden baskets, and these are known as so-called Krampus festivities. Now, if you're not lucky enough to witness a Krampus procession in place, if you visit one of these countries during the winter season, you'll find greetings cards about the topic. Some of these greeting cards show the saint resplendent in the bishop's guard, and others feature the red-tongued horned Krampus, the devil wielding his emblematic switch of birch rods to terror cowering children. These are known as Krampuskarten, and these greeting cards are exchanged in Austria on St. Nicholas's Day and across other countries. Uh, and they vary in design, very much like our kind of Valentine's Day cards, from serious to coarsely humorous, from depictions of Krampus punishing children to others of him proposing to women, because apparently he's a little bit of a ladies' man. But these cards aren't supposed to make us feel warm and fuzzy. 
you know, the verses inside of them stress the importance of good behaviour if one hopes to receive a gift from the saint and to escape the attention of Krampus. I like the idea that the casual uh, hallmark cards threatening people to be on their best behaviour. So in some towns and villages across Europe, there are those who actually dress up as Krampus, and the event is particularly popular amongst young lads and boys who don masks, carry whips of bundles of birch branches, and ring cowbells as they go from door to door, begging for money. Now, this probably sounds like a far more... Mm, entrepreneurial version of Halloween events and trick-or-treating, but this activity is actually part of a larger St. Nicholas festival. You see, masked devils acting boisterously and making nuisances of themselves have been known in Germany since at least the 16th century, while animal masked devils combining dreadful comic antics actually appeared in medieval church plays. Horningman explains that, customarily, when the saint and Krampus confront a small child at home, formerly in a tavern when parents brought their children, a man wearing a bishop's mitre, ecclesiastical robes and a white beard, hears the child recite prayers or hymns practiced for the occasion. He inquires if the child has been faithful and obedient and delivers a short homily. However, his grotesquely masqueraded companion, Krampus, stands by, serving as a dreadful warning to a child who cannot recite well or has misbehaved during the year. The black, shaggy goat-horned figure of Krampus hovers behind St. Nicholas with cloven hooves and long tail. In some performances, he rattles the chains that hang from his wrists and brandishes a bundle of birch twigs, which he wields with more energy than discrimination. The birch, apart from its phallic significance may have a connection with the initiation rites of certain witch covens, rites which entailed binding and scourging as a form of mock death. The chains may have been introduced in a Christian attempt to bind the devil, or just may be a remnant of pagan initiation rites. Although he is officially the servant of Nikolaus, the Krampus does much as he likes and always succeeds in stealing the show, like a bit like a, a pantomime villain. On his back is usually a wooden tub, to which he is all too willing to toss in naughty children. What's funny is, the Krampus is usually portrayed and played by the strongest of the village youths, who traditionally used to compete for the honour of playing the devil. Because, under the anonymity of the horned mask and its lolling tongue, many of an old school may be settled and many a prank could be played, especially on a younger relative who may be coming up to St. Nicholas to prove their... not naughtiness? Niceness, I suppose? Can you prove one's niceness? Anyway. Now, the child's presents are all... Now, the child's parents are always present during this event because their part of the plot is to affirm the child's naughtiness or niceness and then they're meant to intercede when Krampus is about to take their youngster away if they have been naughty. Once it has become clear that the child has been spared, this time anyhow, the kindly saint offers gifts and the saint and Krampus depart. Now, if you ask me, this is a far more entertaining and significant and actually less social anxiety inducing participation than making me sit on Santa's knee as a child, as I would rather have had Krampus threatening me and blackmailing me than have to sit uncomfortably on a stranger's lap whilst I was a little baby. Anyway, much like Baba Yaga, the contemporary interest in Krampus has grown across the world, likely due to internet culture, as he started really popping up and hitting off in the early 2000s. In 2004, art director and graphic designer Monte Beauchamp published a book on Krampus cards and helped organise an art show inspired by them. Though it's not known whether or not this was America's introduction to Krampus on a large scale, Krampus became somewhat of an icon in America from this point onwards. And this has gone across the world. You know, I went to several Christmas markets in Edinburgh this year with my best friend, and she bought several Krampus-related items, including lino art and wax melts. It's needless to say that Krampus is quickly becoming a cultural icon to those who don't have any strong religious connections to the holiday. But before we get any more into the controversies of Krampus, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, I have built all my main business websites over the past few years with Squarespace, and I am currently making my Lady of the Library 
website which will be launched in 2023 in January, which I am so excited about. If you're interested, I will leave a link down below to sign up to the newsletter so I will announce when it all is launched. But I've used Squarespace primarily because I know nothing about coding and that's incredibly frustrating with many other platforms that I have dealt with in the past. However, with Squarespace, I just simply drag and drop my content where I want it and it's incredibly intuitive to update, maintain and create. If you're a creator who wants to expand their revenue stream, then Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes it easy for you to monetize your content and expertise in a way that fits your brand. Squarespace member areas let you sell your courses or classes to your followers, so if you have something that you'd like to launch in January, this is your opportunity. Squarespace also has an inbuilt email campaign option where you can collect email subscribers and convert them to loyal customers, all from your website. Additionally, the built-in analytics feature gives you insights into who's visiting your site, the traffic sources, time when you're spent on your site, the most read content, audience geography, and so much more. So if you're looking to start your new business in the new year or build a beautiful blogging website for your leisure, then squarespace.com is for you. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash lady of the library to save 10% off your first purchase with the website or domain. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and now let's get into the controversies of Krampus. As you can imagine, Krampus has caused an issue in the real world, especially concerning the little lads being given masks and whips to go wild in their neighbourhood and go door to door knocking for money. Naturally, much like Halloween, there will always be vandals and mischief makers hiding behind the anonymity of their masks. So part of the controversy of Krampus actually comes from the idea of masking in general and why that actually serves as a fear factor and why it plays such a crucial role in fear factors such as Halloween, etc. And why some people are actually still socially anxious around answering the door to mask people, even if they're tiny little toddlers out there and potentially can throw eggs at your car. Still, that scares me, but okay. You see, the grotesque Krampus masks are designed to be horrible and frightening, and they're made evident by the way the impersonators of that being conceive the role that they take. What's interesting about the Krampus superstition in terms of the child relation in you know the yuletide naughtiness niceness kind of dichotomy that we're very familiar with with the naughty nice list um the mask shows themselves as being capable of affecting a change not merely in the youth's social identity but more significantly in the components of personal identity of the person wearing them you see masks actually influence behavior by doing something more than establishing anonymity their potency lies in the way they restrict the range of human expression emanating from the actor, and the facial disguise temporarily eliminates from social intercourse that part of the body through which carries the largest proportion of social communication, thus shutting off the individual's personal feelings and attitudes from others, which makes them quite terrifying. Specifically in the season of St. Nicholas, and in the actors who possess the proper disposition, the masks emboldened their behaviour, which isn't usually evident in the youth that would play them outside of the mask. This is demonstrated by authorities in Germany several times prohibiting masking in pre lenten carnival because of the uncivil or impious conduct it promoted, and sometimes because of the fear of seditious or demagogic tendencies suspected to lurk behind the mask. What's even funnier, however, is that the fears of violence and crime haven't always been at the forefront of authorities' mind when banning and controlling masking. For example, there was a ban in the 15th century which forbade people from masquerading as their opposite sex, for reasons scholars today believe was purely to control um, illegal queer activity from taking place that was clearly slipping under the radar of authorities when people were masking as such. But I actually say kudos to the queer participants of the 15th century who found that loophole. That was clever. And I'm sorry the authorities ruined your fan. For multiple reasons, including what we would now label as antisocial behaviour and also religious authorities, Krampus's frightening presence was suppressed for many years. For one, the Catholic Church forbade the raucous celebrations and, in a more hilarious turn of events, the fascists in World War II Europe found Krampus despicable because it was considered to be a creation of the social democrat, which is just... I want to know where their mind process went, but okay, I'll wear it. 
Anyway, we've moved past that symbol, and today he's part of a new wave of Christmas celebrations. We have Krampus films, television episodes, and even Krampus parties, particularly in America. And more importantly, today, a more modern take on the tradition in Austria, Germany, Hungary, Slovenia, and the Czech Republic involves drunken men dressed up as devils who take over the streets for what is known as a Krampuslauf, which is effectively a Krampus run of sorts, when people are chased through the streets by the devils, which just sounds utterly brilliant and I want to be part of one. Maybe next year I will be chased by a drunken man dressed up as Krampus, because that just sounds... You have... you live once. Anyway, when I was researching, you know, the dangers of Krampus, I found a really interesting article. I shouldn't be giggling, I'm sorry. It just... I wasn't expecting to find this. So, there was a medical article detailing an injury caused by Krampus celebrations. The paper looked at Krampus Day celebrations in Austria and explained that, depending on the region, the Krampus parades are accompanied by fire devils, whose faces and hands are blackened by the use of a mixture of ash and pork-derived fat. To simulate hell on earth, these processions are often accompanied by fireworks, and as you can probably guess where the paper is headed, there are multiple possibilities for potential injuries in this tradition. This case study looked at a 27-year-old man who developed skin lesions following the application of a self-mixed cream of soot and wooden pellets, milking grease and baby oil, which was left on the skin for around an hour and a half before he removed it himself. On a mission of medical care, he complained about pain, puritus, and the burning sensations that affected the regions where he applied the cream, which included the face and the dorsal aspect of both hands, comprising a total of 3% burn surface. Now, a chemical alkali burn caused by ash and soot is pretty damn rare, and this burn is actually the result of a high pH value. And because it's so rare, it's underestimated in its potential to cause injury. You see, in actual folkloric medicine, ash was purportedly used to relieve pain, uh, but it wasn't the case for this poor chap. Now, this is where it gets a bit graphic, because I'm going to show you uh, the least of the graphic photographs of his injury, in case you're curious. Um, so I'm going to count to three and show them on the screen. You can look away, or you can click off the video, because it's just a casual conclusion, a chatty ending. Um, but I'll show you the least graphic, because the paper does have quite graphic images. Um, so one, two, three, they are on the screen. Um, and the poor chap clearly had a lot of injuries. Now, they develop it over, I think, a 12-day period. They documented this chap's burns. And there are more graphic images of when, basically, the black came off, which is horrific. But now I will show you the end pictures of his, uh, you know, injuries by the end of it. And I do believe uh, he lost the tip of his middle finger on his left hand from the burns. So there's no joke. I've taken the things off the screen now, so you don't have to worry if you're, if you're squeamish and looking your way. So as you can see, even though it's very rare to have an alkali burn, um, don't take Krampus events lightly, because this poor chap found out the hard way that it can happen at any time, and it wasn't his first time dressing up as Krampus. He'd done this before, so don't casually mix, like, pork fat and ash and soot and baby oil or whatever and put it on your body for a holiday. There are other ways to potentially glue fake fur and look like the devil and chase people down the street in a Krampus run. I, there are other ways to stick it to your body. I, I'm absolutely sure of it. But yes, I shouldn't have been giggling, but I think I just wasn't expecting uh, to go down that rabbit hole uh, so late at night when researching Krampus. And also the postcards were so weird. Like, they are so, so weird. And I really now want to go to Germany or Austria or somewhere where I can get these postcards in person um, and just collect them because they're utterly bizarre and I want them. The idea that this is a holiday that I missed out on in my entire life is just unfair to me and I'm glad it's coming into the mainstream and now I can participate from a distance but yes, I I love it. I love the idea of a Christmas devil. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just one of those weird people but hey ho, I do like my dark stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel or supporting me over on Patreon. And until next time, I shall see you soon for another video. And remember, books save lives, so keep reading.